The Kings pull it off. They manage to go 0-5 in the preseason. None of my teams can win a game. You know, the San Jose Sharks start their season 0-4. The Kings 0-5 in the preseason. But it is just preseason. Before we get into, you know, talking about this specific game, we can talk a little big picture about what we saw this preseason first. We don't need to talk about this specific game very much. It wasn't exactly an exciting game. Why are Also, why are we starting preseason games at 7.30 at night? I don't want to stay up to watch a stream that is barely even working at 7.30 at night. I, I just don't want to do that. But I want to talk big picture first because some of the things, you know, th that I see from Kings fans. People are panicking about preseason basketball. Guys, this is preseason basketball. It's just, it's so funny how this happens every year. Not necessarily just to the Kings, you know, but there's multiple teams every year in preseason in every sport where they play poorly in the preseason and then the fans are all worried and they're like, you know, the our team can't just flick a switch and then they'll be better. And then guess what happens come regular season? The team just, just flips that switch and they're better. And I have 100% faith that come, was it next Thursday against Minnesota, the Kings will be much better than what we saw, especially in these last three preseason games. Because that's the thing. You look at how the Kings played at times in these last three preseason games, and it's not the most encouraging, but it doesn't help that, you know, they have an 0-5 record. But the Kings regulars played well against the Warriors. Like, we have to remember that. They lost those games because they were playing, you know, Mason Jones and Colby Jones and guys that are not going to actually play for this team. And so I would say the regulars kind of played poorly as a as a collective three out of five games. But everyone had the, their moments and the three-point shooting was just, you know, abysmal. And that's just something that I'm not worried about at all. They'll be better come the regular season. No, I'm not worried about DeMar DeRozan being washed because he had a few bad games in the preseason. This guy's been averaging 20 plus points in the league for forever. You know, it's things like that. We really should not overreact to preseason. And obviously it's not the most encouraging thing. Like I'm not saying it is. And if you want to have some level of concern, then that's fine. But what we saw in this preseason is the inability to just hit open three-point shots and then at times just too many turnovers out of sync offense. In this game specifically, they were without uh, Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox plus the regular guys that had been missing. And, you know, they have 22 turnovers. I think they had nine turnovers in the for first quarter. Guys literally just running into each other on the court and just guys just not being on the same page at times. And those are things that I expect to be remedied very, very quickly. In this game specifically, you know, I, I loved the aggressiveness that Sabonis came out with, that Keegan came out with. And at the end of the day, both of those guys just missed some shots that they normally make. You know, Keegan going one for eight from three. Sabonis missed three layups and rimmed out two three-pointers. His three-point shot has been looking good. He just hasn't been able to knock it down. He went 10 for 12 from the free throw line. It just wasn't the most efficient day from Sabonis, despite still shooting 50% from the field and going 10 for 12 from the free throw line. I think outside of those turnovers, the Kings were actually getting good looks. I think the one guy that looked really out of sorts was DeMar DeRozan, who at times was turning the ball over, but then at other times would kind of take control of the offense. There were like two different spells where I felt like he really did have control of the offense and was playing well. But I just think what we've seen is that it, it maybe hasn't been as easy to integrate new players into the offense as maybe we initially thought. And that has caused a lot of turnovers, just guys being not being on the same page, like Sabonis and DeRozan not being on the same page, not being able to get the ball to DeRozan in the right spots. The Clippers were pretty much just switching everything, and the Kings weren't taking advantage of the mismatches. Part of that had to do with not getting the ball into DeRozan. Uh, and some of that just had to do with when they would get a mismatch sub on Sabonis. Sabonis would go into the post. He would get double teamed, triple teamed, kick it out on the perimeter, and then someone would just miss an open three. So I, I did feel like the Kings offense, 
when it wasn't turning the ball over was actually solid. And then on the defensive side of things, I thought they started the game pretty well, but then when you're just turning the ball over a million times, it it's going to affect your defense. So the Clippers were able to get out and transition and score. But then not just that. I think offense and defense are always connected as much as every coach ever is like, don't let, you know, playing poorly offensively affect your defense, right? You try to not let that happen, but it just does inevitably when you're not able to do anything offensively, knock down any shots offensively. It's just going to impact your defense. But I think the things that we did see that were good defensively, I mean, I liked when the Kings were switching everything on the perimeter when it was the guards and the wings and when Sabonis was playing at the level and not letting the Clippers get downhill. Even if that meant that sometimes you gave up some mismatches, I just think that that's the better way for the Kings to play defense in most scenarios because when you try to play in drop coverage and you're not switching everything, it's just, it's, I don't think that that's the right way to play when you don't really have a rim protector. And I think when you're, when you're switching everything, when you're playing at the level against screens and you're really putting pressure on the ball, it's going to make every pass more difficult on the other team. And it's not going to allow them to get into the flow that they want to. Whereas I think when you play in that drop, you're just allowing the other team to kind of pick you apart. And so I think that's what we saw in this game, where kind of late in the first half, the Kings made an adjustment for Sabonis to play at the level, and it improved the defense by a lot. And we saw that going into the second half when the Kings played much better in the third quarter. And so I think that's something we should see more of going into the regular season. And I think those are the types of things that you want to figure out in the preseason. And those are the kind of different things that you can try to, you know, experiment with. We got to see the debut of Doug McDermott in this game, who we found out is on a partially guaranteed contract, I believe, until uh, early January, maybe January 7th. And he came in and he did exactly what you'd want him to do. He just shot threes. That quick release, he was just firing away. I loved it. He went four for 11 from three. And that's just exactly what you want him to do. For a guy on a vet minimum, he does one thing, and that's shoot threes. And he does it very well. And so I think that's just a very good piece for the Kings to be able to have on their bench. Just someone who you know exactly what they are. It's like if you need a 6'6 guy that's going to shoot threes and not do much else, then you throw him out there. And if you need someone a little more versatile, then you don't put him out there. And that's exactly what you want out of a vet minimum guy. And another vet minimum guy in Jordan McLaughlin got the start in place of De'Aaron Fox. And he had a rough one, uh, five turnovers. His size got exploited defensively, kind of like you see with uh, Davion Mitchell. But again, it's a vet minimum guy that you're throwing into the starting lineup. That's not where J-Mac is going to be most effective. And so I think... J-Mac and Doug McDermott are both very good pickups for this team on minimums where they don't have to play every game, although I think J-Mac is a lot more likely to play every game than Doug McDermott, but they don't necessarily have to, especially when everyone's healthy and it's just giving you different depth options off the bench. But speaking of other depth options, looking at the preseason more as a whole, you know, Mason Jones, Colby Jones, both continue to just be bad. I mean, Colby Jones, I think this was probably his best game of the preseason. Uh, What he did defensively, he took a charge. He was making things happen on that end. He was getting steals. So doing things that we kind of, when he first got to the team, we saw from him, like making things happen on the defensive end. So that's a good sign. But it's just on offense, he just continues to look very lost and you can't have uh, a guy like that out there but he did make a three so I mean that's good but then he also you know went one for two from the free throw line which is a trend that's continuing and so it is disappointing having Mason Jones and Colby Jones both perform poorly and and, you know Colby Jones he has one more year after this year on his deal but with Mason Jones if he's not going to perform right now then there's no need to waste a two-way spot on him I've really liked Mason Jones game in the G League, but he's just been so bad in the preseason. And that doesn't necessarily mean the Kings are going to cut him now, but you're at the point with him 
Whereas an older guy at this point, that you don't want to waste the two-way spot on a guy if he's not ready to make an impact right now. And you want to free that up for younger players. And so a very disappointing preseason for him. Now there's not too much else to talk about once you get to your the you know the fifth game of the preseason. I liked how Sabonis and DeRozan are both able to you know attack and get to the line and that was good. But then on the other end, the Kings continue to like give up more free throws than they get, and so that's you know a bit of a concern. I think guys like uh, Isaac Jones and Boogie Ellis have kind of earned themselves another look, and then uh, you know we didn't see much from from really anybody else in this game but yeah that's uh that's a wrap on the preseason again it is preseason and i will continue to say that that this does not matter and that i do believe that we will flip a switch once the regular season starts because i've just seen this too many times where a team can look really good in the preseason or really bad and it really just doesn't matter come the regular season and what matters more is that, you know, a guy is how a guy like Mason Jones or Colby Jones or Isaac Jones, all the Joneses play. We did see a triple Jones double Ellis lineup, so the full house. So that was cool. But now I'm just excited to get to the regular season. Get me out of this preseason. Obviously, it sucks that, you know, Kevin Herter and Trey Lyles and Orlando Robinson and of course Devin Carter as well, that none of those guys were able to participate, especially the guys that are going to come back sooner. But it's definitely going to be important for those guys to come back because even though I think that the guys who we put out there for the regular season opener who are healthy right now, even though I think they will shoot better from three right off the bat, it will always be nice to have more three-point shooting out there. And I think a guy like DeMar DeRozan, you know, he didn't have the best few games here to end the preseason, but we saw what he could do earlier on. And for, you know, however many year veteran looking at preseason numbers just really isn't that important when you have much larger sample sizes to look at. So just get me to that regular season. As always, shout out to No Rain and Joe Mama for being members and supporting the channel. There should be a pull-up for members to be able to vote on uh, the player of the preseason, which is pretty much just a test because I've never done a poll before on here. But I'm going to start using that more in the future. So make sure to the members to vote on that. And so I will see you guys at the start of the regular season. Peace.